Now we want to look at uh, something called an absolute function. Now we've we've seen this a little bit. We talked a little bit about it in class. Writing the absolute value of x uh, with these lines, and basically what, as we said before, it's a situation where we want to consider the number and its magnitude but not direction. Now remember we can talk about numbers having direction, either a positive or negative direction. And when we start to put them on a number plane, we're, we're, there's four different directions that can go in. Go in. Um, so, but what we want to do here is not worry about the positive or negative, just worry about what's its size, its magnitude. So in this case we consider min 4 and minus 4, they're going to give us the absolute value and come down to the same number, 4. We're not worrying about where it, which way it went on the number line, we're just worrying about how far away it is from the distance of, uh, what's its distance from O on the, or from 0 on the number line there. Also we could think about this way, taking the absolute value of something is like squaring it and then taking the positive square root of it. So that'll give you back to the positive value each time. So that's what we mean by an absolute function, uh, absolute uh, value. And then we, what we want to eventually do is graph these types of functions. But we want to solve equations with them first. Uh, before we do that, let's have a look at the, mo the um, work here. So this one would give us 7 times the absolute value of thre minus 3, which would give us 3 minus the absolute value of 21. Now, it's like working with brackets. When it's, if we do any calculation, with it, it's, you're following this correct order of operations still. So that will give us 21 minus 21, which gives us 0. So that, notice that well, I had to put the absolute value in because that was left out. But you're seeing what we've got there with that one. This one here, again, do your absolute values. And so this would come down to 3 times 8 minus 2 times, and the minus 7 becomes positive 7, plus the absolute value of 2, minus 2 gives you 2, so it gives you 24, minus 14, plus 2, and then do your calculations, which would give us 12. 9, comes down, comes down to 9, minus the absolute value of 4, which is just 4, minus the absolute value of minus 6, which would come down to 6. So 9 minus 4 minus 6 gives us minus 1. So we can start to see how our order of operations have to work because we treat them like brackets in, as such. We do any calculations of the brackets, then multiplication, then division, and then subtraction and addition. So what about an equation? What if you were given this? Some number, and we take the absolute value of it, gives us 4. Well, how many solutions have you got there? Well, you've got 2 because... Minus, absolute value of minus 4 gives you 4, but also the absolute value of 4 gives you 4 as well. So we've got to start considering that situation when we get an absolute value equ equal equation or inequality in that, in that regard. So solve these equations here. For, so if you're looking at this situation, the absolute value of 6x is equal to 18. So really what we can consider is that the absolute value of 6, well, 6x could equal 18, which gives you x is equal to 3, or 6x could equal minus 18, because if it's minus, the absolute value of minus 18 gives us 18. So x could be equal to minus 3. So that's where we get our two solutions there as well. So a half x could equal 8, if that's the case, x would be 16, and a half for x could be equal to minus 8, if that's the case, x would be minus 16, because half of minus 16 gives us minus 8. Absolute value of minus 8 gives us 8. x minus 3 is equal to 0. Well, there's only one solution here, because x minus 3 has to be equal to 0, so x would have to be equal to 3. Again, x plus 2 could equal 12, so 10 plus 2 gives us 12, positive 12. Absolute value gives us 12. Or x plus 2 could equal minus 12. So if minus 14 plus 2 equals minus 12, or x would have to be minus 14. So that's how we start to look and think about our absolute value equations. Considering these ones, x minus 6 equals to 7. So we set it up, we've got x minus 6 equals 7, x would be 13, or x minus 6 equals minus 7. We add 6 each side, we get minus 1. Again, 
check these through put them back into your equation do they work good remember good thing about equations is we can see if they work or not x plus 7 absolute value of that so we take it equal to 4 or we can take it equal to minus 4 because the absolute value of either of those gives us 4 solving the equations we get minus 3 and 11 as our answers x minus 5 could equal 2 or it could equal minus 2 again we solve both of those we can get our get our answers 2x minus 7 could equal 3 or could equal minus 3 and solve those equations add 7 divide by 2 add 7 divide by 2 and we get those two solutions there so that's what we're looking at now they're a little bit simple what if they come a little bit harder in this situation absolute values on both well again what we can what we need to just consider is that if really we could consider four situations situations where at the same time they are both positive or they are both negative well if that's the case well, if they're both negative at the same time, then they're going to be, our negatives would cancel and give us a positive anyway. Or we consider where one's positive and the other one's negative, or one's negative and the other one's positive. Again, we, our neg we can multiply by our negative, so only one would be positive or one's negative. So we really only still have to consider two situations. Consider where they're both positive. So if we do that and then we solve that equation, so 3x minus 7, add 2x. Sorry, subtract 2x on both sides, add 7 on both sides, we get x is equal to 4. Again, go back and check your solution to see if it's right. And then we have 3x minus 7 would be equal to negative of 2x minus 3. So we solve that one through. So we've done the same thing through here. So take the positive in both of them, and then take one being positive and the other one being negative. It doesn't matter which one you want to be positive and which one's going to be negative. So we take the, neg take the negative through there, and then we solve that equality. This time, we've got one that's a little bit different, because we're taking the absolute value of uh, a function there, and it's going to be equal to x plus 7. Now, the problem with x plus 7, it may be negative. Notice when we went back here, we never took an equation and said, okay, let's take the absolute value of 3x, and that would be equal to uh, minus 5. Because you can't take the absolute value of anything and get an answer that's minus. There's no solutions to that type of equation. So we didn't show you anything like that. Everything we had here was equal to a positive number. But when we get our... Comp our answers here our questions here they're a little bit more complex and the problem we face is that x plus 7 if x can be any number x plus 7 could be a negative answer and that's a problem so what we need to do is for this these ones solve them like we just did questions 9 and 10 so we take two positives and then when one one's positive and one's negative do it that way so this is what I'm doing both are positive and then take the 2x minus 1 is positive equal to minus x plus 7 so if when, when I do that I do get answers and what I need to do is then test those answers to see if they work because some of them might work but they might not work it just depends on the, the given situation and the given the values we find whether we sub them in there and we we're able to get positive answers there so I've, you can have a look we've solved them both down 8 and minus 2, tested them, and they both work. I'm able to put them in the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation, and I get correct answers there. So that that's, works well for us. Question 12, though. Again, I've taken the positive, and I've taken the negative. Now, when I go to test them, I get x is equal to minus 7, and I sub that in, I get minus 25, can't equal the absolute value of minus 25 because I okay, take that that would be a positive that means that minus 7 can't be a solution of this equation doesn't work and so if I do it on the for one one's negative and the other one's positive we solve and get x is equal to 25 26 on 5 again when we sub it in we don't get the same answer so that means that it's got no solution and that's okay there might be there's basically what we're drawing here is a straight line and the absolute value of a straight line and 
sometimes they might not touch each other. Remember when we find where the x values would be the same there, we would be finding um, simultaneous equations basically. We're solving a simultaneous equation as such. And it's just a case where these two lines never meet because that one is absolute value. And you'll see in our next video that we, when we get absolute value functions, our line, they, they're not, uh, have, they don't have a range that's going to be all real values because there's only going to be, there's going to be a minimum value for an absolute value function. Because it's all, because the y values are always going to be positive. But when we get x values giving us negative answers here, that's going to be a problem because the straight line is going to miss it. And that's okay. So don't panic if you get no solutions, but you do have to test when you've got this situation because that could be negative. That's always going to be positive. And so you have to check your solutions very carefully to make sure that you can get answers every time. Or we don't. if we don't get answers, we're able to say that we don't get, uh, there's no solutions to those types of problems.